Welcome to Servo. So, <laughs> so the elevator pitch for Servo um, is that with Rust, we can build better web browsers than currently exist. Um, and this was the elevator pitch for, uh, for Rust itself back in the early days when Mozilla first started funding it. Um, because they were building Firefox and they said, we know all the ways we can do things wrong with C++. What if we had a language that stopped us from doing that? Um, but that by itself, like building a new language is already an investment, a long-term investment. Um, but if the goal is to then do something with that language, uh, that is a very risky proposition if you need to build the language first before you can even start doing the thing you actually want to do. So obviously, the easiest way to validate that thing is just, what if we build a second browser at the same time? What could go wrong? So, Servo was a project uh, under the Mozilla banner from 2012 to 2020. Um, with had some, so, uh, it was led by a, or it, there was a, a full-time team working on it um, that I led during that time. Um, it was the second oldest Rust project after the Rust compiler because we were building it uh, in con like at the same time as the compiler. Um, and for the early years, we were actually really influencing the development of the language, um, finding compiler bugs. Um, and then that sort of, you know, we, we, we sort of parted ways leading up to the 1.0 release um, when we started asking for things that the language didn't actually want to give us, um, things like single inheritance um, or, or green threads and things like that. Um, so it was a small team, but with a really large community that did a ton of work over those eight years. It was about 1,200 people um, that contributed during that time. It was really exciting. Um, and you know the 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 contribution graph here like there was a ton of activity we got made a lot of really cool progress um, but then the team got laid off and uh, at that point it wasn't really clear what the future of servo was um, because the servo that was you know we, we had nightly builds all along but the nightly builds were in a really weird state um, because like Simple pages with like they were heavy on text and images. Um, they worked really well. They looked fine. Um, and pages that use a lot of like multimedia content, those also uh, often looked really good um, because those were the things that like this small team was really focused on at the time. But um, oh, what's going on? Weird. Okay, so. Um, the, unfortunately, there were a ton of pages that looked really bad or just crashed the browser immediately. Um, and that wasn't a super compelling uh, experience for people who were just like trying out a nightly build and seeing, hey, what's this flashy new browser look like? And it would just crash immediately. Um, so 2023 comes around um, and there's a small team at Agalia, uh, who's a browser consulting company, um, and they were funded to really focus on improving Servo's layout engine um, and help maintain the project. Um, and so this actually then really revitalized a lot of the community. Um, there's been a ton of new contributors in the past few years, um, and the browser is actually getting a lot better at rendering parts of the web than it used to be. Um, and you can see again, there was a huge drop off in contribution, and it's really starting to, to get back to levels from its peak. So let's take a look at what 2023 looked like. This was like, you know, the Google sign-in page. You can see it's all a little bit wonky. Uh, you couldn't even click the next button. You, like you would try and it would highlight and then nothing would actually happen. Um, nowadays, you can log in. You can actually open up Gmail. You can read through your emails. You can open like Google chat and stuff. It's really quite slick. We're quite, um, we're quite pleased with that. Um, here's the Discover You Trekked uh, website. In 2023, uh, it looked pretty pretty wonky um, like the stuff was like half cut off and positioned badly um, now it looks much more like uh, the the website if you open it in another browser um, and similarly trying to open discord in the the version from 2023 uh, just broke immediately um, and now you can actually log in and and read stuff and it's pretty pretty exciting that way um, it was actually quite hard to find this these kind of comparisons because so many pages would crash when I tried to load them in the old version um, so 2025, really, the focus now is how can we make Servo something that people actually want to use? And by people, what we're talking about right now is developers who would like to be able to show web content in their applications. We're really not focused on a like end user general web browser at this point. Um, we're focusing on can we build a low friction Rust API that has a really nice integration into existing like, cargo build pipelines um, that allows people to get a, a instance of servo rendering their content as quickly as possible. So really right now, if you have a GL context in your application, um, we are really good at being able to show 
you know, one piece of web content inside of that application, inside of some other stuff you're drawing in that window. Um, what we're going from here is we want to make it really easy to then show multiple different things that are unrelated um, so that you have more flexibility in the kind of content in your application. Um, there's supposed to be more things showing up. Um, there's a list of experiments that people are doing with Embedding Servo right now. Um, there's a uh, experimental backend for Tauri, the app development um, framework, uh, which right now, today, the one that you use uh, is is using your sort of like native web web view for your platform. Um, but they're they're looking for you know can we integrate Servo into that for so that you have a uh, a browser uh, instance that is uh, co consistent across all platforms. Um, we have we have community members who are experimenting with can we can we turn servo into something quite different quite radically different as like a terminal browser um, like something like links for example um, that uh, has a JavaScript engine in it um, but doesn't actually you know render to a, a normal like GUI but actually just shows you content in your your terminal window um, we have uh, people from from places who are building a port for the Open Harmony OS. Um, so there's a lot of different things being done with Servo. There's, uh, there, I think there's someone from KDAB here um, who, who built this integration with uh, Qt, where you can render Servo content inside of Qt applications. Uh, or, or Qt, I've never actually said that out loud before I realized. Um, so I think there's, there's a lot of really interesting experiments now. 2025 really is the year where people are starting to actually be able to use Servo in interesting ways inside their, their Rust applications. And we're really excited about that. Um, and I said, like, there's so many people working on, on things in Servo right now. Um, there's a ton of different, like, there's a ton of different things that go into rendering web content. Um, that's like, you know, any arbitrary web content. And there's people who have all sorts of focuses here. There's people who are focusing on um, integrating with gamepads and WebXR. Um, there's people who are really keen on um, like WebGPU um, and, and like all these new web technologies. Um, there's a ton of stuff happening. It's a very exciting space. So we're really keen on that. So if you want to know more about Servo and uh, how to contact us, um, we've got a Zulip chat instance where you can uh, ask your questions. The, the code's on GitHub, obviously. Um, and then we've got some, uh, some social, social media that you can also talk to. Um, so yes, and I'd love to, to talk to you more after, uh, after all the talks are done.